Do you want to make your day a lot cheesier, or just looking for a snack that will melt in your mouth? Try the potato and cheese sticks recipe, which is super easy to make and only needs the simplest ingredients. Mash 400 grams of boiled potatoes. Add 50 grams of sour cream and mix both of them together. Then season with 20 grams of onion, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper and 50 grams of fried chopped bacon and mix again. Now take a ball of the mix Flatten it in your hand and place 15 grams of cheese in the centre, then wrap the potato mix around it. Dip your potato stick into flour, covering it completely. Then submerge it into whisked egg mix and some fine breadcrumbs. Now fry your potato sticks in a deep pan of hot oil until they're golden brown. This should also mean the cheese inside has melted. Lay your sticks out to cool and season with some more salt to taste. Now serve up with some salad and some tomato sauce for dipping, and enjoy! This cheesy potato meatball bake is ooey gooey delicious. Made with boiled potatoes, beef meatballs, bechamel sauce and cheese, this dish would be fantastic for dinner any night of the week. It would also make a great cheesy dish for a game night or any other gathering. Join Cooking Company as we guide you one step at a time in making these easy and yummy cheesy potato meatball bakes. Let's get started. Set some water to boil and add three washed and peeled potatoes, making sure the water covers them. Boil for 10 minutes. Remove your potatoes with a slotted spoon. Now take 300 grams of beef mince and season with a teaspoon of salt and of pepper, 100 grams of onion and 40 grams of chopped parsley. Mix everything together well. When it feels like you've created a good mince mixture, Time to get your hands in there and start to mould your meatballs, keeping them a consistent size. Voila! Take one of your boiled potatoes and slice it into thick slices like this one. Make sure to mind your fingers. Repeat with the other potatoes. Now use the sliced potato to line the bottom of a glass baking dish. Also make sure to cover the sides of the dish too. Then position your meatballs around the base of the dish. Insert slices of potato between them to fill the gaps. Now pour over 250 milliliters of bechamel sauce, coating as much of the contents as you can. Crumble over 300 grams of cheese for a flavoursome finish. And bake at 200 degrees for 40 minutes. Now that your baking is done, comes the fun part. Presenting your food, grabbing a fork, and having a taste. Brilliant! Welcome to Cooking Company, and here are four delicious ideas for the humble potato. 
Style number one, delicious Duchess potatoes. We start with a big potato, then peel it completely and cut it into even chunks, like so. Once it's fully sliced up, boil the pieces for about 15 minutes. Once they've cooked, put them into a bowl and then it's time to mash them really well. Add salt, pepper and 100 milliliters of cream. Then mix everything together really well until it becomes nice and smooth. Then add freshly chopped red chilies along with chopped spring onions and mix well again. Spoon the mixture into a piping bag, the kind used for cake decorating and then make spiral shaped designs on a baking sheet lined with baking paper. When you've filled the sheet, bake them at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes and then your fancy looking Duchess potatoes are ready to be served. Mmm, very nice. Style 2. Potato Gratin Take another large potato, peel it and grate or cut it into thin slices. Make sure to mind your fingers. Now in a bowl, take an egg yolk, add salt, pepper and then 200 milliliters of cream and whisk everything together well. In a baking tray, take some melted butter, add minced garlic to it and grease the tray with this mixture making sure to cover the whole base of the tray. Once you've done that, add sliced potatoes to it. And then once the tray is covered, carefully top it up with the cream mix, making sure to coat all the potatoes. Then cover the whole thing with a generous portion of your favorite grated cheese. And now it's time to bake for 40 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. Look at that cheese bubble. Once it's ready, garnish with some spring onions and your yummy potato gratin is ready to be served. An excellent treat for yourself and for your favorite people. Style number three, fondant potatoes. Take a big potato, peel it and cut it into four pieces. Now take these pieces, place them flat on the board and then carefully trim off the curved sides, like so. You're trying to reduce them to smaller circular shapes, much like this one. Place a pan over heat then add melted butter, and once it's hot, add some chopped garlic for some extra flavor. Then it's time to add your rounded potatoes into it. Make sure all the potatoes fit in nicely. Add some fresh thyme for fragrance, and let it fry for 15 minutes. Turn the potatoes occasionally during cooking, so that they brown evenly on both sides. You can circulate the garlic butter too, to prevent the potato from drying out. Wow, I can practically smell it now. Add some chicken stock to the pan. Stir well and let it cook. Now take a baking tray, space out the potatoes inside it. Top it up with the butter, herbs and stock gravy and let it bake for 30 minutes at 200 degrees. Once that's done, your delicious fondant potatoes are ready to be served. A really great way to prepare them. Tasty! Finally, style number four, roasted potatoes. Take tiny potatoes, give them a wash, then cut them into halves. No need to peel them. Then set them to boil in salted water for 10 minutes. 
When they're cooked, set the pan aside. Then in a new pan, take olive oil, minced garlic, rosemary, and stir together. And cook them well over a high heat. Make sure that you keep circulating the mixture. You need to make sure that nothing burns in the pan. Then strain the oil over the potatoes with the help of a sieve to stop any pieces landing on top of your potatoes. When the oil has fully drained through, add half a teaspoon of salt, the same of pepper, and a teaspoon of paprika. Then mix the potatoes well with it. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap and toss the potatoes properly. Make sure you keep a firm hold on the wrap and on the bowl. When you think all of the ingredients have been fully mixed together, remove the plastic wrap, place your potatoes onto a baking tray lined with paper, spread all your potatoes out evenly and let them bake for one hour at 200 degrees. When they're done, garnish with some coriander leaves and serve hot. Totally delicious! Enjoy your potatoes and thanks for watching. Tasty meatloaf wrapped in bacon and stuffed with cheesy mashed potatoes. The meatloaf is so tender and juicy on the inside with a sweet and tangy glaze that adds so much flavour to the meatloaf. A true meat and potato lover's dream. Combine 500 grams of beef mince, 120 grams of cooked onion and garlic, 150 grams of parmesan cheese, 50 grams of breadcrumbs, 2 eggs, 1 teaspoon of salt and pepper, 4 tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and 100 millilitres of milk and stir well with a wooden spoon. Once fully mixed, add 20 grams of basil and stir through. In a new bowl, mix 200 grams of tomato sauce and 100 grams of brown sugar. Then add in two tablespoons of mustard and tomato paste, one tablespoon of paprika and two tablespoons of garlic paste and mix everything. Mash 300 grams of boiled potatoes and 10 grams of butter. Then season with half a teaspoon of salt and of pepper. Add 100 millilitres of cooking cream and gently mix into the potato. Add 50 grams of parmesan cheese and combine. Line a savarin pan with a kilogram of sliced bacon. Like this. Make sure to cover the entire centre part too. Now paint your bacon with your homemade sauce. Once coated, carefully spoon in your beef mixture, pressing it into the bottom of the pan. Now add a layer of your potato and smooth it out. Now you can add a second layer of beef. Once pressed down, you can start to fold the bacon over to create a lid, like this. Make sure all the bacon pieces overlap. Bake at 180 degrees for one hour. Watch that bacon get nice and crispy, then remove from the tin and coat with a layer of sauce.
Once coated, pop the meatloaf back into the oven for five minutes. Once it's served up, use a sharp knife to take out a generous slice. Look at that! Time to enjoy your meatloaf with some lovely green vegetables.